Samsung has a new premium phone, the Galaxy S23 FE. What sorts of features do you get with this one, and is it a better deal than the regular S23? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our Samsung Galaxy S23 FE review. Just like the previous FE series phones, the S23 FE aims to be a more affordable yet still premium alternative to the true Galaxy S flagships. Compared to the previous one, the S21 FE, the new model brings updates to the design, the chipset performance, and the camera quality. The back of this phone is made of glass, as opposed to the plastic back of past models. We have ours in this stunning purple colorway. It isn't flashy, but it can turn heads when it catches the light. You also get a nice silver accent on the separate camera rings. The aluminum frame is matte here, and the S23 FE is actually surprisingly heavy, over 30 grams more than the previous model. As you'd expect from a Galaxy S smartphone, you get IP68 rated ingress protection against dust and water. The display of the S23 FE is a 6.4 inch dynamic AMOLED with a 1080p resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate. It has rather thick bezels actually, which reminds you that it isn't a true flagship. Also, the front has Gorilla Glass 5, not Gorilla Glass Victus like the previous model. It's sort of a downgrade. The display performs well though, the sharpness is decent, and the color accuracy is consistently great. There's also support for HDR10 Plus video content. The max brightness is also higher this time around. We measured about 450 nits when controlling it manually, and it can boost to nearly 1000 nits maximum in auto brightness mode. The refresh rate of the display makes it quite smooth, and it's adaptive, but not quite as much as on the flagships. It's able to dial down to 60 Hz when idling to save energy. For audio, there's a pair of stereo speakers. They have very good loudness, and the sound is richer and deeper than the previous models, with more bass. You can listen for yourself for the provided link. To wake up and unlock the phone, you can use the under-display fingerprint scanner. It's quite fast and reliable. And the S23 FE comes with 128 or 256 gigs of storage. Like before, that's not expandable through microSD. At the time of this review, the interface of the phone is Samsung's One UI 5.1 running over Android 13. However, both the new One UI 6 and Android 14 are set to roll out to the device pretty soon. Overall, Samsung promises up to 4 years of OS upgrades and 5 years of security patches for the S23 FE. Here you get the same software experience as on higher end Galaxy models, and that includes DeX support. You can find out more about One UI 5 in our dedicated video. The FE series phones are known for using flagship grade, yet slightly outdated chipsets, and that's exactly what you get here. The S23 FE comes with either an Exynos 2200 or a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, depending on which market you purchase it from, just like the Galaxy S22 family. Ours is the Snapdragon version, but either way, this is the flagship silicon from last year, and it's still quite competitive. In benchmarks, the S23 FE is of course outperformed by this year's flagships, but it does sit well towards the top of the charts. In practical use, it feels quite snappy, with plenty of power under the hood. However, when it comes to thermal management, the results aren't peachy. During our prolonged stress tests, we observed significant throttling in the CPU, but the stability of the GPU performance was even worse, and quite unimpressive. You may end up with occasional drops in performance when playing demanding games. Now let's get into battery life. We've actually introduced a new battery life test, which is based on actively using the phone. That's different from the total endurance rating we've used until now. I'll drop a link in the description if you want to learn more about it. The S23 FE has a 4500 mAh battery, and it was able to earn an active use score of 9 hours and 45 minutes. The individual times are solid when it comes to calls and video streaming, but below average for web browsing and gaming. We got better results out of the Galaxy S23. The phone supports 25 watt fast charging, which hasn't changed, and of course the phone doesn't come with a charger. With a proper adapter, we were able to charge the phone from 0 to 58% in half an hour. Those numbers are in line with the Galaxy S23 and S21 FE. There's also support for wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. Moving on to the cameras. The setup is like the S23s, but the zoom camera has a different sensor. Along with the 50 megapixel main cam and 12 megapixel ultra wide, you get an 8 megapixel 3x telephoto instead of the 10 megapixel one on the S23. The main camera saves 12 megapixel photos by default, and these are great. They have plenty of detail, high contrast, and wide dynamic range. The colors pop quite a bit to produce a typical saturated Samsung look. 
In low light conditions, the S23 FE can use this automatic night mode. These sorts of photos have a high amount of detail, a bright exposure, low noise, and wide dynamic range. The main cam can shoot video in up to 8K resolution at 24fps. The quality is good, with true-to-life colors, high contrast, and wide dynamic range. The detail level is decent, but you can see signs of upscaling when you look up close. The 4K footage from the main camera is very good. There is plenty of detail, good sharpness, and again, true-to-life colors and wide dynamic range. Maybe the sharpening is just a bit excessive though. You can enable electronic stabilization across all cameras, resolutions, and frame rates, and it works great to smooth out your footage. In low light, 4K videos from the main cam have low noise, saturated colors, and enough detail. There is this annoying flickering though, and there is no anti-flicker setting here. The 8 megapixel 3x telephoto camera saves 12 megapixel photos by default, which means the output has been upscaled. Indeed, if you look up closely, you can tell, judging by the lower detail and softer than usual look. Still, the detail is enough for most purposes, and you get a wide dynamic range, excellent contrast, and popping colors. Portrait mode uses 3x zoom by default. If the lighting is decent, the portraits come out nice, with proficient subject separation, good exposure, and likable blur. At night, the S23 FE will rarely use the actual telephoto camera. If it does, the photos come out okay, with the average detail and some noise, but a good exposure and wide dynamic range. Most of the time, though, you'll get a digital zoom from the main cam, and these shots have a very poor level of detail. 4K videos from the telephoto cam are great. There's good enough detail, and you get good sharpness, accurate colors, and wide dynamic range. Now we have the ultra-wide cam. Its 12 megapixel shots are excellent, with a high level of detail and impressively wide field of view. The contrast and dynamic range are praiseworthy too. At night, with auto night mode, the ultra wide's photos are good. They have a bright exposure, saturated colors, wide dynamic range, and enough detail. The 4K videos from the ultra wide camera are nice. The field of view is quite wide, the resolve detail is enough, the noise is low, and the colors are lively. The contrast and dynamic range are also commendable. And finally, selfies come from the 10 megapixel selfie cam, which doesn't have autofocus. Regardless, the selfie quality is excellent. They have plenty of detail, good contrast and dynamic range, and a realistic color rendition. So there you have it. The Galaxy S23 FE brings a great display, nice speakers, a powerful enough chipset, and capable cameras. And compared to a full-on flagship, it's relatively affordable. But what about the Galaxy S23? It has gone down in price, and in some markets the price difference between the S23 and the S23 FE isn't all that huge. In those cases, you might want to go for the higher-end model if you don't mind the smaller screen. But otherwise, the S23 FE is a nice, well-rounded smartphone, and even better if it saves you some cash. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're looking for alternatives to the Galaxy S23 FE, you can check out our reviews of the Asus Zenfone 10 and the Nothing Phone 2. Let us know what you think, and I'll see you on the next one.